series. This is the fifth of our series of sessions and we've already covered topics such as entrepreneurial opportunities in agri-tech and genomics. We've also had sessions on medical device regulation and testing in India. If you're interested in our previous sessions, please visit our website and the YouTube, Sign YouTube channel for the recordings. Uh, today, um, we have to start on a somber note. We have very recently lost a stalwart of the academic community here at IIT Bombay, Professor Rinti Banerjee. Her loss was sudden and she will be sorely missed by the scientific community at large. I would request our CEO, Ms. Poini Bhatt, to kindly share her thoughts and call for a moment of silence as a show of respect to the dearly departed. Yes, so uh, as my colleague said that we lost uh, Professor Rinti Banerjee. Rinti Banerjee, whoever is in the direct network from this audience, I'm sure you know her, that uh, she was a faculty member at IIT Bombay. Uh, by herself, she was a doctor and then she did even PhD further and join academia. Very prolific researcher. There are so many technologies that has come out of her lab and licensed to the industry. Ironically, she worked even like on, on last entire year, she worked on COVID related research that got also licensed to industry. Her work got licensed to industry. So many products came out of her lab, even on COVID and she fell through this. Uh, it's a really a very, very, you know, uh, um, uh, sad loss for the institute, the researcher community, faculty community, their colleagues. And of course, like, you know, uh, people like us, where she was like supporting us uh, in, in innovation and entrepreneurship activity from core of her heart. So I, uh, our, sin our sincere prayer for uh, her family to bear the loss and may her soul rest in peace. Can, can I request all of us to uh, observe silence for one minute? Thank you all. Uh, we move on uh, to our session now. Uh, just, uh, I will just stop sharing. Okay, so um, today's session is unique in its focus. We are commemorating the joyous occasion of India's 75th independence by focusing our attention on a fairly long-standing challenge to our prosperity, which is basically the mal malnutrition that affects our expectant mothers and especially our young children. Human resource is one of our country's greatest assets and strengthening the health of our population will lay the, will lay the foundation of a thriving India in the future and improve the quality of life for millions. We are also commemorating uh, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav initiative of the government through this session. And Dr. Mukherjee will briefly touch upon this in his open remark, opening remarks. Sign as a technology business incubator has strived ever since its inception in 2014 to have a broader social impact by supporting innovators in this and other health tech domains. We provide seed to scale support in a sector agnostic manner to deep tech in innovations at a pre-incubation, incubation and acceleration level. We're also facilitators of a wide variety of government funding schemes and could help you in your entrepreneurial journey by allowing access to a rich network of mentors, IITB faculty and alumni, state-of-the-art research and manufacturing facilities, legal and IP-related professionals, and even across-the-border collaborators. 
If you have an idea, a product, or need mentoring at any stage of your journey as an innovator, please reach out to our team and help us introduce you to our ecosystem. The Biotechnology Ignition Grant, or BIG as we call it, a BIRAC funded ideation to POC grant of 50 lakhs covering a period of 18 months is opening its 19th poll on the 1st of August. Please get in touch with us if you're a biotech innovator and need help applying for this grant. With that, I will quickly introduce our panelists today. They have been selected since they're in the best position to give us a clear idea of the country's strategies in com combating malnourishment some hard data on where we stand today, and what opportunities and focus areas innovators should pay attention to to have a significant societal impact. First, it is my pleasure to int introduce Professor Satish Agnihotri. Professor Agnihotri, who was uh, formerly a career bureaucrat, is now Emeritus Fellow at the Center for Technology Alternatives in Rural Areas, also known as Sitara in IIT Bombay. He was head of Sitara and also founder head of the Center of Policy Studies. He has earlier worked as secretary uh, for coordination, uh, in the, served in the cabinet secretariat as secretary MN, MNRE and DG for defense acquisition, additional secretary agriculture, DG shipping, and junior secretary in the cabinet secretariat, among other positions that he's held. Earlier, he has worked in Orissa in different capacities from 1981 to 2007 in women and child development, renewable energy, transport industry, Environment and General Administrative Department, among other sectors. Professor Agnihotri is well suited to this panel because he has worked on issues of gender, mal child malnourishment, and energy access inequalities that exist in our society. His research on declining sex ratios in India has been approvingly cited by various scholars, including Professor Amartya Sen. He has done uh, his background is. Um, a, degree, a master's degree in physics and an environmental MPEG from IIT Bombay. He's also done an MA in rural development followed by a PhD from the School of Development Studies, University of East Anglia, Norwich, Norwich um, UK. He's a distinguished alumnus of that institute. Now, um, he, he has several areas of uh, teaching and uh, various in research interests focused on child, ma child mal malnutrition and its removal from India policy in practice, which is uh, basically public policy in practice in, complex, uh, in a complex area that takes uh, account the specificities of region, organizational structure, et cetera. Also development communication and energy access inequalities. Our next speaker is Dr. Shishendra Mukherjee, who will today be taking the place of Dr. Dewan, who unfortunately had to drop out at the last minute because of some urgent meeting at the ministerial level. Dr. Shishendu Mukherjee has, is a trained medical microbiologist, bringing with him 25 years of experience in academic institutes, pharma companies, and decade-long experience in, natural, in national, international, philanthropic, and governmental funding agencies, and has been instrumental in supporting the innovation ecosystem in India and beyond. He is currently the mission director of the Grand Challenges India, the flagship program of the partnership between the Department of Biotechnology, Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Welcome Trust. This platform supports initiatives that could dramatically change the health and development landscape in India. He also heads the Intellectual Property and Technology Transfer and Communications Division in BIRAC. In addition to the above, Dr. Mukherjee has also uh, led the National Health Authority, Ayushman Bharat uh, and Startup Grand Challenges Program from BIRAC. He has a background uh, his, as a PhD, he has a PhD, holds a PhD in microbiology, is also a law graduate and uh, has done leadership courses from the said uh, Business School University of Oxford and Global Health Leadership course from the London School of Health and Tropical Medicine. Dr. Mukherjee is also the country ambassador in India for the Royal Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene. He's also the general secretary of the Society for Technology Management Professionals, or STEM. We thought today's summer webinar could also do with a voice from a young, young uh, entrepreneur with a few upcoming solutions in this domain. Today we have with us Dr. Sogandha Das, co-founder and director of Ada Innovations Private Limited. This is a medtech startup that is currently incubated at SAIN IIT Bombay. Sogandha has over 10 years of R&D experience and has worked in the areas of pharmaceutical nanotechnology, point of care diagnostics, and clinical pharmacology. 
She holds a doctorate in pharmaceutical technology from the Institute of Chemical Technology and was a DST Inspire Research Fellow. She has won various uh, awards like the Best Table 2016, NBEC 2020, and has been a recipient of the prestigious Gandhian Young Technology Innovation Award in 2017 and the Bayrak Swishtik Grant also in 2017. She was also nominated to be a part of a week-long in-residence program in 2018 at Rashtra Pratibhavan, um, which was organized by the National Innovation Foundation for the Training and Mentoring uh, Innovators. This successful uh, success that um, she has uh, uh, enjoyed has continued on to her entrepreneurial uh, journey with Ether Innovations, which is recently receiving the Canada India Healthcare Innovations Award 2021 granted by the Canada India Foundation. Ada Innovations is currently working on the Bayrak and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation funded project under the Grand Challenge Exploration uh, Award 2019, where they're developing a diagnostic device for early screening of malnutrition. Last but not the least, today we have the honor of getting Dr. Anand Pan to moderate this session for us. Dr. Anand Pan is a physician with a master's degree in bioethics from the University of Toronto. He is a researcher in global health, bioethics, and health policy. He is also adjunct uh, professor in Yenepova, a yet to be deemed university in Mangalore, India, and adjunct faculty in Kasturba Medical College, Manipal, India. Dr. Bhan is immediate past president of the International Association of Bioethics. His work is focused on ethics and equity in health, mental health, digital health, public health ethics, research ethics, community engagement, ethics of innovative technologies, and ethics training for professionals. He is currently based in Bhopal, India. Before I hand over the session to Dr. Bhan, I would like to let you all know that this session will begin with our panelists sharing their experience and insights on today's topic, after which we will open up the session to all the participants to ask questions. Dr. Bhan will also be directing his pertinent questions to the, pan to the panelists. We request that you post your questions in the Q&A box and also raise your hands to personally ask your questions. If you would like your question to be directed to a particular panelist, please mention that. With that, I hand over the session to Dr. Bhan. Thank you so much, Dr. P, and uh, honor to be here uh, on the panel and to be moderating this session. Uh, I want to start off perhaps by acknowledging that, you know, we have a stellar panel today. We have uh, an academic who's been in the uh, policy space, who's been involved in uh, initiating and running and implementing multiple programs in the space of responding to maternal and child health and, and working on in the development space. We have an academic who's been a researcher, now is in the funder space and has a lot of experience of uh, working with uh, innovative technologies as well as working with you know, a lot of innovators in trying to uh, help them uh, figure out what are the right schemes to choose and how they can move towards the market. And then we also have an innovator who uh, is already working in, the, in this space and has been uh, has already received some funding and is working on some really interesting ideas which she will talk about. So I think that will give us a very well-rounded perspective on um, the issue which we are talking about, which is malnutrition. Now, malnutrition is not new to India. It's, uh, it's something I think we've been dealing with for um, almost um, our own existence uh, as an independent nation. And uh, unfortunately, while development certainly has touched many parts of India, malnutrition remains an area of uh, major concern. If you look at the data nationally, almost 35% of children under five years of age are still uh, stunted, which uh, is obviously quite a high number. It is also much higher than um, the average for the Indian, uh, so for the Asian region, which is around 21, 22%, and also in some cases is even worse than the indices for indices for some countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. Also equally important is wasting, and uh, wasting is also pretty high. It's around 17, 18% again for children under five years of age. And that I think as many of you would know, is that uh, age group where uh, if you don't intervene and if there is a major nutritional deficit, then you are talking about um, uh, a child who's probably going to be impacted for their whole life because they were not, uh, you know, their, their nutritional needs were not responded to. And again, this is something which we should worry, certainly from the policy perspective, but also then uh, requires all of us to think through what needs to change as India talks about becoming a super power, then how do we ensure that uh, our, our young children are uh, taken care of and their nutritional needs are uh, placed at a priority uh, pedestal. 
Now, of course, you know, you can talk about nutritional deficiencies, but we also have to acknowledge that uh, another aspect of malnutrition is what is now becoming malnutrition with a double L. And that is the fact that there is now also an increasing section of the population which is overweight, and that includes young children as well. So I think we also need to talk about that segment and the need for moderation and, and healthy food, because unfortunately, um, you know, we are also seeing a lot of junk food consumption perhaps not enough nutritional uh, foods being available. And this also impacts uh, sometimes kids across the uh, socioeconomic gradient. There's now research uh, from areas such as Dharavi, which shows that there is a lot of dependence, for example, on, um, on biscuits, on namkeen, uh, because that is one way of satiating your hunger. But of course, that doesn't give you any uh, good nutrition. Uh, and so you also see kids sometimes uh, living in urban uh, low poverty uh, pockets who uh, might be overweight, but not overweight by virtue of eating uh, necessarily healthy food. Another segment, obviously, which is of interest is uh, young women, um, adolescent girls, and also pregnant women. And again, very important that those, uh, the segment of the population and their nutritional needs are addressed. So I think these are all the areas we will talk about and much more. And uh, I will get started with the panel. Uh, if I can perhaps first get Professor Agnihotri uh, Professor Agniyotri, you, uh, as we were discussing earlier, been in the policy space. You've also uh, now been uh, teaching and researching in this domain. So if you can help maybe uh, sort of highlight some of the key uh, overview issues. What are the challenges? Why is it that as a country we've not been yet able to address this issue of malnutrition? What are the kind of government responses which have happened over the past many years? And where is the need for innovation and which we can talk about towards the latter part of this program? So over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, being in IIT now teaching, so one has got the habit of uh, making the PowerPoint presentations of your lecture. So if it's okay, I'll share my PPT, just about seven slides, uh, which is what I recommend <clears throat> to my students who make presentations. So I hope this is visible and yes, is sir. full screen. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. I'm saying child malnutrition and the Amrut Mahotsa. So while we are talking of the Amrut Mahotsa celebration, which is uh, the child who is saying, I am malnourished, what are you doing for me? Now, uh, where do we stand? I mean, we have high and persistent levels of malnutrition among children. And, and uh, I mean, it's an unfortunate reality. Uh, and this has happened notwithstanding the implementation of the ICDS program. Now, whenever we talk of ICDS, we say largest intervention of any kind, uh, any of its kind anywhere in the world. Now, this um, uh, adjective or, or this description applies because of uh, our size, I mean, inherent size. So, Hindustan mein kuch bhi kare to largest uh, of its kind in the world. Then the second is this very smug. Uh, counterfactual, uh, that things could have been worse. It reminds me of Murphy's law, which says smile, tomorrow may be worse. But I think it's not much of a consolation for the child. And more importantly, this argued counterfactual doesn't work for a very simple reason that even Sri Lanka and Bangladesh have fared better than us. In a language of cricket, I think this is something which I find even the Anganwadi workers in Sri Rampur and Dang understand. Our run rate is slow. Not that we have not made progress in 70 years. I, I'm not into that 70 years, mein kuch nahi hua type. 70 years mein hua, run rate has been slow. So what has happened is our asking run rate is going down. And what is more worrying is our decline of child malnutrition is not commensurate with our economic progress. So when we talk of the India story of eight and a half percent economic progress, someone should say what is the India story of uh, rate of reduction in malnutrition. And very interestingly, it's also not commensurate with the IMR, in fact, uh, or child mortality reduction. One of my students is actually working on this puzzle as to how is it that child mortality has come down much faster than the reduction in malnutrition. So this is where we are at the beginning of our Amrut Mahatsa. What has been our HLE's heal? One major issue is open defecation. And, and sorry, I'll be candid in my discussion because I have seen the hiatus between the policy and the academics and the implementation. So I'll, I'll, I'll be very candid. 
Professor Ramalinga Swami talked about that famous Asian enigma. I think now the work of Dean Spears and Robert Chambers has, has very clearly brought out enigma wagare nahi hai. I think it is the open defecation which is the culprit, even if you are drinking water supply, India has done pretty well. So that is one issue and we need to tackle it head on. Low birth weight. Now, if you ignore the pregnant mother, boya ped babul ka aam kahan te pai. So, if you are having a mother whose hemoglobin level is six, you're okay with it. If she doesn't take rest, if she doesn't take adequate food, if she doesn't take diverse food, you're going to see its consequences on uh, a low birth weight baby. I'll come to that. In fact, when we talk of health and nutrition integration, this integration, we have to be very clear that health is like the opening batsman. Then you have huge pressure on the one down. Okay. Then after the child is born, uh, you are not very particular about giving colostrum, which is actually the immunity provider, and exclusive breastfeeding for first six months, which is the immunity booster. After those six months, in fact, uh, data will show that in the first six months, children are not that badly off. From seventh month, what begins is, I would call it the power playovers, where if the child doesn't have adequate diet and adequately diverse diet, then again, the nutrition level go for a toss. But where are we emphasizing? We are emphasizing on supplementary nutrition in the three to six year age group. And after the damage is done, damage gets done in the first 1,000 days. And when I say 1,000, it is minus nine months and plus 24 months. So, so it's, it's not birth plus 1,000. And there, uh, we have seen that preventive measures and early childhood care, that holds the key. Now, what, why has this been our HLE's heat? I mean, the question may come. Answer is there was absence of good quality data and analysis. So therefore we are barking up the wrong tree. Anal availability of good quality data in the Sarkari domain wasn't there. We collected data regularly, religiously, didn't analyze, didn't try to improve it. NFHS surveys would give data after 10 year interval. And we will keep discussing with each other ki purana data ho gaya. Some things have changed, of course. The other one was lack of convergence. Convergence between nutrition, convergence between education, even Narega, you will be surprised, water and sanitation. Mother's literacy and mother's uh, years of schooling make hell of a difference to the child's uh, nutritional status. These were not appreciated because of what I said, the hiatus between the academics and the policy. Okay. What has changed? Luckily, a few things have changed. After NFHS 4 data, which was for the first time a good quality district level data, things have changed. It has also highlighted the spatial dimension of the problem. You have clusters of malnut uh, uh, high malnutrition, you have pockets of good performance. I will refer you to this uh, excellent user-friendly site, nfhs4.indiagis.org. Please visit it, play around with it. NFHS 5, surprisingly, and a pleasant surprise, came just after a gap of four years. So we have broken that jinx of 10 years, but, and there is a big but, the NFHS 5 data is there only for 22 states, so we can't make all India estimates. And some of the bigger problematic Bimaru states, if I may use the old terminology, NFHS 5 batting So once their uh, track record comes out, we will know what has happened. But luckily, consequence of NFHS 4 uh, was there was a lot of emphasis on decentralized planning with focus on districts. Mind you, this is a very important change. Not state, uh, not all India, uh, district level. And the convergence on district between various line departments, health, education, nutrition, water sanitation, rural development, et cetera, was to come through the district administration. 
And in fact, uh, I, I always jokingly say there's a lot of touching faith on the institution of district magistrate, which reminds me of Shashi Kapoor's famous dialogue, uh, Mere Paas Ma Hai. So now we are saying Mere Paas District Magistrate. But then that word district administration needs capacity, needs uh, in, infusion of science, infusion of technology. But the other in, uh, good um, development is that this Ocean Abhiyan, which was launched uh, recently, it also talks about the Kuposhan Muk enclaves. Now, whether it is a Kuposhan Muk Panchayat, whether it is Kuposhan Muk Block or Kuposhan Muk District, that's a different issue. And it's not rocket science. So, so anyway, courtesy NFHS for the appreciation for these factors, we land with the launch of uh, Poshan Abhiyan, which the Honorable Prime Minister did in Junjunu District in Rajasthan. I'll quickly come to what should be our strategy. And these are the four terms one should remember. Ladan is the approach, Kamjor Kadi Khan, the analysis, Antyodaya, the priority, and Arnakulam, the dream. Why I'm saying Lagan? I think most of us would have seen this film. Removing malnutrition is almost like scoring, okay, let me say 300 runs in 50 meters. You can't depend upon individual batsmen. The, everybody has to work together, the team has to work together. Okay. Now, it starts right from the pregnancy, weight gain during pregnancy, then give you, you give, uh, come to the birth weight of the child, the first six months of life, then the 18 months. So everybody has to put in their effort. Now, whether your target is 300 or 250 or uh, 225 will depend upon whether you are talking of the tribal girl children, you are talking of the urban uh, child in Kerala, or you are talking of a uh, rural uh, basti in Jhumri. So it, it differs. Every time we keep wondering, ye to achche se kiya and ye bhi achche se kiya, why is it that we are not getting results? That is where this approach of Kamjor Kadi Khan, I think many of the younger people won't know this serial, but they used to be old serial of Nina Gupta, Kamjor Kadi Khan. Very frankly, a chain does not snap at the strongest link. Chain snaps at the weakest. So if you have done everything all right, you have fed the child and you have not given the deworming tablet, then you are not implementing integrated child development scheme, you are in implementing integrated hookworm development scheme. There will be a seminar like this where a hookworm speaker like me will say, Sarkar ne hamara budget badha diya. So we should, we should keep looking at each stage, which is the kamjor kadi. And that is where the regional analysis becomes important because the problems faced in uh, Kerala, the problems faced in Bihar and the problems faced in Haryana will be different. Different factors will matter in different places, which is where importance of knowledge comes in, where you have to do regional analysis, GIS analysis, principal component analysis, and find out Kamjor uh, Kadi policy. Once you do that, Antyodaya is the priority. You must look at the disadvantaged population because that is what is slowing down your run rate. But at the same time, I would also say that in order to create the confidence in the system, the Arnakulam, the dream why I'm saying it is, when Arnakulam declared that they were 100% literacy district, it triggered the imagination of all other 540 districts. Today, we need another district or on the block which will say we have eliminated malnutrition. I mean, I, and in the football's language, I call this, these are the places which are closest to the goalpost. It could be a Kolhapur, it could be a Kendrapada, it could be even in a district like Kandamal, we have located blocks where the district magistrate was uh, in, uh, informed, 700-800-bacche malnourished hai. And, and uh, her reaction, and she's a doctor herself, her reaction was, itni taupat hai system ki. So we should, we should look at these fourfold strategy, but, and this is where minding the gap comes in, we have the issue of data. We must trust the data which is coming from below, but we must verify it. This is a Ronald Reagan's famous discussion, trust but verify. In the capacity building of the field workers, you need to move to a new pedagogy and there is a scope for science and technology there. 
The other biggest problem is that this knowledge does not, the knowledge which gets generated in Delhi and in New York and Mumbai and in Bhuneshwar does not percolate down to the field level, does not get it internalized. So whatever you may do, if the Asha, the Anganwadi worker is not going to give albendazole tablet to the pregnant mother, you are uh, going to run into difficulty. So you may say, okay, sir, yes, but where is the scope for social enterprise or a startup? I'll, I'll come to that. Each of the kamjor kadi, in my view, has a scope for technology and enterprise. And I'll just give a few examples and, and then, uh, then uh, wind up. We'll take more questions. Data collection and analysis. There's a huge scope for use of geoanalytics and visualization tools. Water, making that water potable and sorry to say, even E. coli free in some areas is a challenge. And I know uh, technologists who are working hand pump may see device fit karbo and you get a E. coli free or potable water. Sanitation, can we look at least water or waterless disposal of feces? So we are not being we are not there yet. Weight gain during pregnancy. There's a scope for centralized kitchen. Akshay Patra has uh, done an excellent job. Counseling to the mother. We have in IIT itself the spoken tutorials, which is a Ministry of HRD supported uh, project. I'll talk about it. We can have chatbots, we can have games. Our spoken tutorial for which teach the mother the correct techniques of breastfeeding and the young child feeding have been translated into 22 languages. Then we realized that the tribal mothers don't understand those uh, samvedhanik bhasha. Hai. We translated into Korku. Then someone said, uh, said Ki, sir, fir, Santhali ne kya paap kiya hai? So we said, nee, nee, koi paap nahi kiya. we are translating them into Santhali. And they, it, it does create a lot of scope. You can have games. We are now getting down to a new pedagogy where the Asha or the Anganwadi worker and others, they can learn their tasks through games. In capacity building, field functionaries and mothers is one part of the story. My, with all due respect to the medical fraternity, doctors aren't aware about the, or, or they ignore the importance of colostrum feeding. They think cesarean section hua to uh, uh, golden hour mein breastfeeding nahi ho sakta. Even their uh, blinkers have to be removed. And I'm very happy that there are doctors who are now into this exercise. But they actually show you a film. Caesarean hua, uterus stitch ho raha hai, bachcha breast crawl karke aram se apna dood khich raha hai. Okay? Uh, but there's a scope for capacity building. Diagnostics, huge scope. If you get me a good non-invasive hemoglobin detection, there, there have been claims, I know, but uh, I want something which is more accurate in the range of uh, hemoglobin of three. Please don't uh, yell at me. Milta hai field mein. 3 to 8 wale range mein mere ko accuracy de dijiye i mean you, you, you will have you will have huge uh, chitragup ke khate mein your uh, entry of your apr will be just fantastic outstanding entry one other um, i mean other parameters also there is a crying need micronutrient space now what happened what has happened fortunately we are okay with calorie and protein our deficiency is coming micronutrient Food products that give the full spectrum, you make what is nutritious, convenient, or you make what is convenient, nutritious. Can you make more nutritious? Think about it. And making both of them affordable. My last point is small plot cultivation. In fact, in the pandemic and the coming years, take from me that mothers uh, and child's nutrition, dietary diversity is going to go for a toss. We need to have massive promotion of Nutri Garden and that also poly houses. One of our students is working on bamboo uh, based poly house, 10 year longevity, one third of the convention poly house. These are the scopes for uh, the entrepreneurial uh, thing. We can discuss a bigger uh, list. I don't want to give IIT example, but outside IIT, baby chakra, just Google it, is, is, a, is a huge intervention. So I leave you with a thought. Can Amrut Mahotsav be the beginning of a Kuposhan Mukh Bharat? Why? Because the child cannot be it. Thank you. Thank you very Hello. much.
I yes, hope sir. I was not too candid. No, candid is good. I think you know this is meant to be a conversation <laughs> which stimulates, and I think that was stim fairly stimulating. I'm very glad that you brought in Thank your you. own personal experiences of, of course, dealing with this as a policymaker. And it's quite clear from your presentation that you've given this a lot of thought, and you know you're very passionate about. Um, the issue. I, I, I totally get and support the fact that, you know, th this is a time for impatience. I think uh, our kids cannot wait. They've waited way too long. We've lost many. Um, and, you know, the, the quality of life continues to be an issue for those who obviously had nutritional deficiency, even if they've managed to survive. So I think that that importance cannot be um, reinforced uh, any better than the way you did. And also, I think it was great that you also highlighted some of the problem statements where we still um, need good quality innovations and um, and solutions. So that would be uh, some food for thought for all of our um, innovators who are in the audience. Um, if I could now maybe transition to Dr. Shishendu Mukherjee from uh, Bayrak and uh, request Shishendu you to maybe focus on telling us a little bit around uh, certainly the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, maybe starting off with that. And then uh, perhaps speaking to from the Bayrak and DBT side, uh, what are the kind of initiatives which already exist uh, from a funding uh, uh, space perspective, uh, especially targeted at malnutrition? And uh, also, uh, how can innovators get in touch? What are the kind of things you would like to uh, tell our innovators to be cognizant of as they are thinking of applying any of your own guidance of having worked with many innovators and having been uh, a funding lead for many years as to what are the kind of things they should avoid? And what are the kind of things, of course, they should be focused on? So over to you, um, Shishendu. Thank you, Anand. And uh, it was uh, thanks for the, the you know invite for Poini and Bhakti for the invite. And I'm as I as Poini just mentioned in the beginning that uh, I'm stepping into shoes of Manish who had to rush, rush for a meeting, uh, but uh, I'll try to do justice to it. Firstly, you know on the. Um, I think Professor Agnihotri has, you know, given a very strong base and platform. Um, and his last statement of Kuposhan, this Amrit Mahotsav should lead the Kuposhan Mukt Bharat, I think is a very strong statement and a commitment. I think we should all work towards it through various mechanisms uh, to take it forward. The Am Amrit um, Mahotsav, which we are supporting in the 75th year celebration of our independence, Bayrak along with DBT is strongly committed and we are organizing a lot of events and such, uh, such type of um, seminars are being organized. 75 such seminars are being going to be organized. And this is in that series, this is the 16th one. Through our network of seven incubators, seven plus incubators, we are going to do that. And th these, you know, um, uh, these seminars will focus into various uh, elements of unmet need, scientific challenges, uh, entrepreneurship development, how entrepreneurship can address to unmet need solutions to challenging problem, grand challenges. I think it will focus on all these elements and try to see these, you know, how we can address those unmet needs with an innovation which is affordable, accessible, and which can be used ultimately to take it forward. So I think that's the idea of Amrit Mahatsav from our lens as a innovation, um, you know, organization which enables innovation, we call Bayrak as an organization which enables innovation to take it to a next level. So as um, you know, uh, uh, Bayrak uh, goes Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council is um, uh, basically a not-for-profit entity of the Department of Biotechnology. And our main aim is to enable innovation. Though we are a funding agency, but funding doesn't mean we only fund, fund and then forget and then monitor. We enable those funds so that the innovation can really move to the next level or de-risk the innovation to a level where it can really reach uh, to uh, as a point which can be used uh, where for it is intended to. The main theme is we we look at entrepreneurship, we we look at in, uh, incubation, mentorship, and we have uh, recognitions around the globe. So I think we are an agency which empowers, enables, and accelerates innovation. Next slide, please. I think uh, I will not describe each of the scheme uh, here, but I think uh, you know Bayrak works from really concept to reality. You know, we, from ideation to market. So we, from bench to bedside, from lab to the field, I think uh, on areas of biotech innovations and supporting innovation. So we support innovations through all these angles, through various funding pots, 
and also through our various mechanisms of mentorship and enabling uh, enabling mentorships so i think we have mechanisms really to look at you know the innovations from not only the funding angle but how to mentor that innovation fund is one of the element but how the rest of the part is strong signs the exit strategy the validation the regulatory challenges the ip issues and how it can be mentored to a next level so we have pots for all of them which can really move your concept to reality or the lab to market next slide please we again we have different pots of money we have uh, you know pots of money which for, for, for if it, young students they have fellowship grants for uua where they they have a idea within themselves but they want to validate that idea in a setting within the lab or within an incubation network or something they can do that and then slowly you can just step up this ladder if there is innovations of the eua graduates so satare then you have the big which pioneer also described a bit earlier and then we have the seed uh, seed fund and the sibri and then the slowly the innovation moves up to the higher levels so ideation to uh, manufacturing and to commercialize and recently bayrak has also initiated a fund of fund the ace fund i will not be talking about that but i think there we we really venture fund innovations to really spin off into a market uh, a product which can really move into the market and this is all areas of life sciences research um, you know uh, medtech devices uh, professor agnotri mentioned very important innovation in the in his last slide with where nine challenges where he mentioned one of the you know uh, uh, hemoglobinometer which is uh, which can just uh, do by touch i think we have programs and we are supporting such innovations so that we could see and these we going to be a very in landmark innovation to support new, uh, you know uh, identification of uh, malnutrition and uh, in, in our population next slide please so uh, we have as you said i told you in the beginning we have networks of our incubation network around the around country and uh, supported the uh, bionest uh, and specifically related to the agri areas we have dedicated uh, the incubation centers which are uh, you know supported for agri uh, agri uh, agricultural development including nutrition as well so which looks at nutrition sensitive uh, crops which are our uh, interventions which can be really uh, bring out nutrition rich crops or uh, varieties which can be used so we have dedicated uh, incubation centers who really work around that and this is the list uh, of that next slide please may I have the next slide please so, so some uh, there are a couple of success stories in our uh, nutrition profile portfolios and there are a couple of them so uh, i will not be uh, reading out them i think these slides will be available to you through the youtube so we success doesn't mean in our funding plan that at the end of the product at the end of the cycle you have a product in place but it really moves the path of innovation so that it is de risk and when de risking means you know a lot of other things can flow into it and the product can be innovated so that it can be delivered faster so that's how we you know we have funded very basic innovations which can really got good proof of concept so a lot of other funding agencies also join in to support it or we are there the first right of refusal to take your funding to the next level as well so i think that is the idea but the mentorship here plays a very important role uh, uh, that that is what, what the key of our funding means that we provide very strong mentorship and hand holding starting from how to write a grant application once you have won a grant application how to monitor the projects we have within byrac system uh, first hub and uh, ip law clinic clinic where anybody can walk in and get the solution get connected to the regulators you want to do, uh, design a field trial we help you to get connected to the regulators help you to design the protocol of the trial so i think that's how the mentorship and the you know, you know we would like to see that how you grow out into the innovation cycle next slide so this is our uh, uh, you know uh, portal you can visit that we have 150 plus products here and to take it to the next level now coming back to anand's question about how uh, nutrition programs we have supported and how we we would like to see i think the last slide was a very encouraging slide from professor agnihotri i think where he mentioned nine problem statement which really supports innovation so byrac works as i told you in from the with our various models of funding like maybe the grand challenges india or our grants in the big 
were both on nutrition specific as well as nutrition sensitive interventions. We have a couple of examples which support uh, those, uh, those type of uh, innovations to be taken to the next level. I, I think also uh, Professor Agnihotri mentioned, first, you have to have a very strong proof, proof of concept to scale your innovation. Once you have a proof of concept, you need to translate that proof of concept. Once you translate and you have successful translation done, then you need to, and that translation is proven by data. So, uh, you know, that, that data needs to be you know, analyzed, validated. So th that's one of the key elements so that the policymakers can look at the data and design a policy. So we, within our Biorack system, we work on basic research, the translation research. We have a strong data team. We have funded a number of data projects where we are trying to enable the researchers along with data scientists to you know, analyze this data and come out with the format of the data which can be readable by the policy makers. So we have a NIT policy think tank specifically on nutrition within the Iraq system where they, you know, it's the virtual basically uh, a system where, you know, uh, the experts globally look at the data generated, how that can be interpreted and come out with small policy briefs. Sorry, we uh, lost uh, the sound for a second. Yeah, maybe if we can just give him a minute, uh, otherwise we'll uh, maybe just reintegrate him when he joins. Happens with online meetings. What? Shishindu, are you able to hear us by any chance? Maybe he can switch off his video. Yeah, I'm just trying to see if he can hear us because uh, I don't know if there's a connection issue. Uh, Rathati, can you try calling and calling him? Uh, I think he's left the meeting. Uh, yes, I'll do that. Yeah, in the meantime, maybe I'll get uh, Sovanda to get started in the interest of time. And then we can maybe uh, get Shirshendo when he responds to questions to also speak about some of the issues which are left. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Shishendu, for presenting the BIRAC perspective, one of the various very relevant and interesting schemes which are available, as well as the pathways to accessing them and the kind of things which innovators should keep in mind. Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Soganda. Soganda is uh, uh, funded to actually do innovations in this space. Our uh, startup is Edhain Innovations Private Limited and it is actually uh, working on a rapid uh, point of care diagnostic kit for uh, quantitative prediction of source of nutritional imbalances at the early stages. And uh, so Avinda will speak about her innovation, but I would also request you to perhaps speak from your own experience as a young uh, innovator around some of the challenges uh, in this space and what are, what are when you're looking at uh, platforms like Sign, when you're looking at sources of funding like Bayrak, uh, how, you know, how can, they uh, enable um, young innovators like you to be able to work in this space. Over to you. Thank you, Dr. Bhan. Uh, I would like to share my screen. Uh, So good evening one and all. Uh, we had some very interesting topics being discussed previously in the last one hour. So I will be continuing this discussion forward where uh, IDHA as a startup, uh, we are working on democratizing nutritional deficiency testing. And what we do at IDHA is we are trying to develop a technology whereby uh, we can uh, diagnose uh, malnutrition at an early stage. So we are currently being funded by Bayrak and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation under the uh, grand challenge exploration scheme. So like we all understand, uh, malnutrition has progressed to become a global pandemic with 2 billion people suffering worldwide from micronutrient deficiencies. And it is costing uh, uh, around 3.5 trillion to the global economy. In India alone, more than 190 uh, million people suffer from micronutrient deficiencies and undernutrition as of 2017. 
and among them the children are uh, gravely affected with 2.3 million deaths annually and this has a major impact on the uh, economy with multiple forms of malnutrition which uh, reduce nearly 8% of india's economic growth now this entire cycle of malnutrition starts with a malnourished mother and this was something professor agnihotri had uh, pointed uh, in his in his speech and uh, it starts with a malnourished mother it continues into a malnourished baby and with that a malnourished girl and then this entire uh, vicious cycle continues so if we can if, in order to break this cycle we need to address this malnourished mother so that the entire cycle can be broken despite one fifth of all births worldwide occurring in india one third of the indian women of reproductive age are undernourished and that results in low birth and the neonatal mortality india still accounts for a very high number of maternal deaths and child deaths globally however india does not have a national monitoring system for nutritional uh, monitoring of nutritional health of women now though recommendations are there in place by various organizations both national as well as international in terms of regular monitoring and tracking of reproductive age women and children uh, but maybe because of lack of technologies available till date we are still following the physical method of evaluation that is where parameters like height weight body mass etc are being measured though this is a very good screening tool and it has shown good uh, success in the past but it basically focuses on energy deficiencies uh, like professor agnihotri had mentioned and therefore it is probably not the best adequate measure for identifying the type of nutritional deficiency very recently uh, in 2019 for the first time the indian government uh, organized a micronutrient survey and among children and they found that the children were deficient in a number of different micronutrients ranging from iron folic uh, folic acid there was zinc deficiency there was iodine deficiency etc et so basically malnutrition is a multifaceted problem and therefore it needs a multifaceted solution not one solution can serve every population plus india is a very diverse country so we have different food habits we have different cultural beliefs and habits so not every uh, district or every state can be treated as uh, with the same um, lens basically so uh, along with uh, this uh, physical evaluation so what basically happens in physical evaluation since it measures the symptoms it is a very late stage of malnutrition and it cannot identify the asymptomatic stages so malnutrition basically when we have we talk about nutrient deficiencies they are generally asymptomatic in the early stages so uh, basically this method can identify uh, an individual only when that person has progressed to a symptomatic stage in order to identify uh, individuals who are asymptomatic as well as identify the actual uh, nutrient that is deficient we would require lab tests but it becomes difficult to uh, get such uh, lab facilities available in these low resource settings so that is where we decided to play on and we made it our usp and we decided to provide nutrient deficiency testing uh, at in the field levels so that is how tatvashodh was conceptualized which is first of its kind smartphone assisted multi nutrient detection device it has various features like portability because it would be uh, used on field it would be point of care platform technology where we could quantify uh, multiple clinically significant nutrients and it would utilize a smartphone based digital detection and we could wirelessly transfer the data to cloud for remote monitoring and the results would be available uh, quite uh, fast so basically this device will provide an array of tests and uh, you could and these uh, elements that we have identified those would serve as an indicator of a particular type of malnutrition malnourishment so we are continuously in the process of identifying more nutrients which we could add to this arsenal based on feedback from clinicians and various other experts working in this field so this is a video of a preliminary uh, prototype that we had developed initially in the lab so this indicates uh, the usage that is very simple to use you can diagnose it very fast and you can easily transfer the data uh, to remote uh, for remote monitoring so overall tatvashodh provides value in terms of easy implementation in field settings ability to detect asymptomatic cases of malnutrition it provides an evidence based management of malnutrition 
it minimizes delays and errors in manual record keeping it enables remote monitoring and overall it helps in total nutritional surveillance monitoring so if this kind of a tool can be included in the regular prenatal screening of uh, pregnant women or even for lactating women then it would help in identification of malnutrition at an early stage uh, which could prevent future problems or complications so this kind of st uh, nutritional status monitoring could have implications in terms of timely estimation of poor maternal nutrition which would help in early evidence creation and evidence based interventions it would also help to evaluate the impact of new or existing programs on health and nutritional status so for example if government has implemented a nutritional supplementation program in an area so if this particular tool is available to them then the population that is being supplemented uh, the test results the through the tatva shod would give you an indicator of progress of that uh, supplementation program further it would also help to create a database of demo demographic and health survey so basically it would give you an aerial view the data can be collected and it could be used later for uh, basically analysis or for understanding malnutrition in a particular area if anybody wants to work in that particular area that can be a starting point for them however we anticipate certain challenges uh, in the uh, road ahead first of all it would be poor awareness regarding the problem so the beneficiary uh, they would probably they are not very much aware of the problem and they fail to acknowledge the importance of malnutrition and its severity so we would uh, definitely need help from government as well as social organizations to not only generate awareness but also in terms of creating uh, guidelines uh, or to understand how to actually include this kind of a technology into the current uh, working protocol second because uh, we are talking about a price sensitive market so the beneficiaries are generally from a economically backward uh, uh, category and therefore we would again need support from these social groups and the government to uh, take this product forward uh, as a startup we would really need to have an in depth understanding of the government processes and the hierarchy basic requisites that uh, are required to be fulfilled to uh, include such a disruptive technology in the current malnutrition protocols uh, and uh, any other uh, basic channels and how we can actually sell to the government uh, so these kind of things we really need to understand before proceeding further again because we are a startup uh, resources is a limitation for us so we would need constant help in terms of uh, marketing distribution as well as on field implementation of such a product and all the stakeholders in this ecosystem we would require uh, collaborations and partnerships with them so currently we are in product development stage where we have received the seed funding from byrac gc and uh, that would cover mvp development and testing uh, clinical uh, field evaluation and uh, some part of regulatory approvals uh, moving ahead we would require support in product validation as well as market entry in terms of further uh, funding understanding the regulatory requirements and challenges hand holding and support uh, again creating awareness then bulk manufacturing as well as distribution and again on field support uh, uh, would be required so before i conclude i would like to thank my team especially dr nisha yadav who is my co-founder and my other collaborators and advisory who has been part of uh, this project and who believe in this idea at adha we are dedicated towards designing smart healthcare solutions for improving maternal and child health and improving uh, with a major focus on accessibility affordability as well as awareness so if uh, anybody of you uh, among the audience feel that uh, we have a common uh, interest then please feel free to reach out to us we would be happy to collaborate and lastly i would like to thank sign for giving me this opportunity to present our work and uh, i am indeed grateful to be getting this opportunity to be presenting with uh, Uh, and sharing a platform with dignitaries uh, like uh, professor agnihotri uh, dr mukherjee and dr bhan and uh, lastly i would like to thank uh, the audience for their patient listening thank you thank you so much sovendra that's very useful and i think it's really uh, also uh, you know it's, it's good to hear from a innovator especially someone who's working on uh, on an on a solution which hopefully will create a significant impact uh, and and also speaking through 
some of the work that you're doing and what you're looking to be uh, accomplishing over the next few years. And best wishes, of course, to you and your team for all the hard work that you're doing. All right, so I think uh, we are uh, right at 5 p.m. We have around 30 minutes for discussion, which uh, is a decent amount of time. Um, I know Shishendu has to leave for another meeting. So if I can perhaps start with, uh, with you, Shishendu, initiating the discussion. I know you got cut off, uh, unfortunately, just as you were wrapping up. So maybe uh, when you respond, you can also start off by highlighting the issues you were speaking to when you got disconnected. But I also had specific questions uh, uh, which have come through uh, when people were registering, uh, which relate to funding. And one of the questions, uh, which uh, is perhaps a question you get all the time, that what are the kind of steps uh, uh, someone who has an interest in innovation needs to take to get uh, national funding as well as international funding? And uh, is there a space or is there a platform which can bring together entrepreneurs uh, for collaborating, say, with uh, with industry, with researchers, with academics, with uh, perhaps folks from the medical profession. So, uh, you know, so that they can fine tune their ideas, they can get better inputs and uh, better define their ideas uh, before they apply for funding. So perhaps if you can take those two questions and then also wrap up what you were trying to say when you got cut off. Thank you, over to you. Thank you, Anand, thank you. I'm sorry, apologies. I don't know what happened to my net and it got uh, knocked off. So I missed part of Suganda's lecture as well. And so Suganda is one of our Grand Challenges Explorator uh, grantee as well. So it's nice to see her innovation going forward. So coming back, I just uh, I had two points to make before I got cut off. And I think, um, you know, uh, sanitation, what one of the point which um, Professor Agnihotri also mentioned, and sa sanitation is one of the very important issues. So we at the at Bayrak is also supporting a huge program on wash and sanitation, which really looks at uh, you know, developing, uh, you know, water, which can be, uh, it uses less water, more hygienic to, to be used. And we have demonstrated a couple of them, couple of them uh, around India in the Northeast part, in the Southern part as well, which have strong validation uh, going on right now. And they, they will be used and they work firstly off grid as well. So you don't require any power to pump in water or remove water. Water can be uh, we try trying to recycle the water as well so that the, it can be used at places where well, I think so these and especially in the areas where, where in the slum clusters, in the clusters, in the semi rural population where it can be used. So I think that is one of the apart from that, uh, we are looking at working on as a nutrition sensitive agriculture. We have a big program going on in that space with MS Swaminathan Research Foundation, where nutrition uh, products, uh, you know, grown in their backyards, highly nutritious products, grown in backyards can be used by the families and also be sold in the market for livelihood generation. So these are a couple of other projects like solar conduction dryer. We have supported the integrated farming model where one crop of land can be used for, you know, the getting paddy, getting fish, getting poultry also. So I think these type of innovative mechanisms are being tried and used so that we can develop, you know, uh, tools which can increase nutrition, livelihood, and also add to other things. But ultimately, I think, as was mentioned here, we have to be innovative. A good quality data needs to be gen generated. A good quality data needs to be interpreted, uh, interpreted as well, so that a policy makers can really tweak the policy and implement those. And we can move, as was mentioned again, I, I like that statement, uh, the, you know, the Amrit also leads to, uh, you know, uh, Bharat, which is devoid of malnutrition. So uh, that was the point I wanted to make. Now, coming to your question, Anand, you know, what a, 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 a innovator or a researcher needs to look at when he wants to have a, you, know, a, you know, funding done. I think firstly, very important thing is how strong, it has to be a strong unmet need. You have to have a gap which you are filling in. So innovation has to be such which addresses that gap. I think um, uh, that gap needs to be filled in. So that, that is one of the important elements. Once you understand, because if it is a very congested field, you know, you will, uh, you know, get uh, drowned up in the congestion and you will not take your innovation forward. But you need to identify the right unmet gap. Put your science around that unmet gap. Try to find out a solution to that unmet gap. And then build a story. I, I, I always tell my, you know, grant uh, applicant when I do my grant writing workshops is that how compelling story you tell. It should be a fairy tale starts with once upon a time and ends with happily and ever after. So I think the gap which you need to fill has to be built it around the science 
which you are targeting to fill that gap. That story needs to come out well. Then if that story comes out well, the other things will fall in place. You know, the other thing might be the exit strategy. The, you know, if there are regulatory or the field trial issues, you need to address that, but that can be built in. But the unmet gap with the science which you are trying to address is very, very important thing and you need to fill in that. So that is the first and foremost thing. The funding lasts five, seven years in, in funding is not a problem at all. We have in national funding agencies supporting extensively good work on nutrition areas, nutrition enabling areas, may, may be it be medical devices, be it be, you know, trials to understand the gaps or may it be innovative mechanisms of farming to increase the nutritional variety of the crop. Funding is there in all and BIRAC has been spearheading. We have been working with Gates Foundation on a lot of these elements. BIRAC has it, we have our own programs, the government supports it. Then the second thing is how good the team you building. You also mentioned in your uh, uh, opening remarks, a 360 degree approach to address the innovation. That needs to come out from the story. It is not only the science, but the team which is going to deliver that science, that, that team should flow out from your uh, grant application that I am good at innovation. I'm a very good engineer. We can de design this device, but Anand is excellent clinician. I'm getting Anand into the field. He will address my clinical need, understanding that clinical, how that is important. So team building has to be that team building doesn't mean that you have to um, you know, hire somebody, you can get a consultant, you can get an advisor and try to reimburse in some way. So that team building, that story should come out. And finally, the exit strategy, where you will end and from where you will start again. You know, in two years time or three years time of funding, nothing, you know, you will not be able to deliver anything, but you will de-risk your innovation pathway. So I think that story should also come out well, that I will take the program from here to here, but there when, if I have an excellent, a good result, I will take the program from there. I think we've lost him again. So uh, let's go on to the next questions. Uh, sure, sure. And, then, and then we can draw in Shishendu again if required. So while we're waiting for uh, Shishendu to join again, uh, Sogandha, there's a question for you in the chat, which, uh, you know, I think they want more clarity around uh, the innovation that you're working on. Uh, so the question is from uh, Narendra Shah, and uh, uh, he's asking what micronutrient deficiency is your device expecting to detect and at what cost? So if you want to respond to that. Yeah, so we are looking at multiple micro and macronutrients. Uh, currently we have identified uh, five micro uh, macronutrients. Uh, it in includes uh, uh, iron, hemoglobin, we have iodine, we have zinc and some other macronutrients. And the cost would be uh, somewhere around 200 for five, micro, uh, for five uh, nutrients. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Sogandha. So uh, let me maybe go back to uh, Professor Agnihotri. And, uh, you know, there's a whole set of questions which are very interesting and relevant. And I'm sure these are questions you've thought about as well. Um, and, and this has become often a debate. You know, when we talk about malnutrition and solutions, should we be talking about packaged food as a solution? Or should we be looking at our traditional food crops? Um, and the fact that we already have some really good food crops, we often move to cash crops and that of course sometimes has their own issues in terms of the, their nutritional content. Uh, but does the solution lie actually in reflecting on what were our traditional crops? Can we be looking at millets, uh, for example, jowar or bajra? Uh, can we be looking at uh, decentralized, uh, as, as Deepen Modi is asking in chat, decentralized micronutrient rich food production for which can be done at the household level or at the community level um, either via ch kitchen garden uh, back, uh, backyard aquaculture um, and would this help us in creating more arnaculums um, or should we only be looking for an industrialized uh, solution so what you yeah uh, my take is pretty straightforward uh, we should differentiate between packaged and processed you can, that's why I'm saying, if you have nutritious jhalmodi, it won't be processed, it will packaged. Okay? And it will be for that matter. So one has to do that differentiation. Secondly, the traditional foods, yes, what we did was, we did not do the micronutrient profiling of the traditional food available. This is the tragedy. We have never... Uh, brought the Shastri and the Mistri together. 
Now, today, you have the computing firepower available, you have the knowledge firepower available. So, I can tell you that this local food of yours has this micronutrient profile. So, wo zinc, wo molybdenum, ya us, wo selenium ke liye 500 kilometers jane ki zarurat nahi hai. So, we need to do a regional mapping. And in fact, Niti Ayog has come out with a pretty good uh, regional map. These regional foods have merit, but then they don't cover the entire spectrum. So, the whole idea is that you should look at what are the regional deficiencies and uh, mitigate those. So, there is a, the first port of call should be something which can be done at home. So, therefore, yes, kitchen garden. And let me clarify this doubt. The moment I say nutri garden, people think you're vegetarian. Ki baat ho. Nutri garden can be retrofitted with poultry. It can be retrofitted with backyard uh, fishery. Uh, I mean, uh, just now I think uh, probably uh, Dr. Shishendu also mentioned that. That is one place. But then I will also caution that mother, when you go and give her the gyan about the nutritious local food, etc., etc., I use the word deliberately. What is nutritious, make it convenient, and what is convenient, make it nutritious. Not that she wants her child to remain malnourished. She said, Mere ko tumhara nutrition wala do minute ka solution do na. You make a two minute nutritious alternative for me. Otherwise, I am forced to give that child. Uh, I, I have seen a Asha worker giving her child oh, wafers uh, ya kurkure to suck. The child is malnourished. And she says very nonchalantly, Dikro Nebro Thaigayo. So why does, matlab, sorry to, for those who might not ki bacharagya dubla. So we need to be sensitive to the constraints of the mother, whether she is the urban mother, whether she is the tribal mother, whether she is the rural mother, or whether she is urban mother. Mind you, there are urban mothers also. So yes, homemade first preference, if not homemade, decentralized making, and we must go by Gandhi's philosophy, not mass production, production by masses. Decentralized making, but when you are talking of decentralized making by self-help groups or small scale industries, please make sure that quality control and quality assurance is in place. QC to wo banane wala kar lega, QA aapko lana chahi, because you, you can't monkey around in the food area. Uh, Deepen's question, of course, goes back to our conversation sometimes back. But let me also, there was also one question which uh, Hemant asked uh, about uh, regional, uh, uh, you know, regionalization of food. Yes, it is, it is pretty much possible. You have to do that regional analysis. And that is where the site which I mentioned, NFHS4, IndiaJazz.org, I think Hemant, uh, I'll get some student of mine in Delhi to come and just give you a 10 minute ka tutorial. And then I'm, I'm sure you'll get hooked on to that site because you can do so much regional analysis. And then you map your regional deficit with the regional resources. Then find out, uh, is find out minimum bahar se kya lana. So that would be my broad strategy. But every time, please make sure that the, you don't impose discipline on the mother. And I'm, I'm, I'm giving a very uh, simple case that you, you talk to the mother about soya and wo soya may fight it. Jata hai. So mother bolte hai, mero fight it nikal ke do na. And fight it nikal, nikal na is not a rocket science. Uh, even fermented uh, soya powder does the trick. So one of my students has actually come up with a soya spirulina idli. Yeah, I mean, this is an add-on to the general idli with a chutney packet. It literally gives you the full spectrum of uh, micronutrient, which an egg can give. Because she was perturbed ki vegetarian walon ka kya hoga. I said, to bana uske liye product bana ja ke. And she made it actually. She is filing a patent. So my point is, these are the things which can be done. Now, Bihar wale ko mein idli khane bolunga, Keral wale ko litti chokha khane bolunga, to ghar se nikal denge. So, so Heman's point is very valid. But then we didn't do enough research on that. Sorry, I think I'm going on and on. 
No, that's perfect. I think that that helps provide uh, more details. I know Shishendu is back now, and I know he has to leave. So Shishendu, I I think you got cut off again. If you want to wrap up your comments, uh, and then uh, you, you can leave for your uh, other meeting. So thanks, Anand. And I'm extremely sorry. I don't know the office. Why, uh, why, uh, that connectivity is going up and down, so I switched off my video so that I can get the right speed. So I think I was talking that 360 degree. I don't know till what time I was uh, heard. So the 360 degree approach, which Anant you also mentioned in the beginning, that approach needs to be when you write your funding application to any funding bodies, which is strong science addressing an unmet need, but creating a team to deliver that unmet need has to be essential to take it to, um, uh, take it to a level where it can be looked at funded. We have to, uh, of course, in a good English they, uh, and good title of it really supports it. So how compelling story you build in will be very important to get uh, secured. But funding is not a problem. In any, any slot which you are fixing, it may be proof of concept to a final validation. I think fundings are available on all, all, port, all ports. The, one of the critical element which I would like to mention here is data. And the data generation is very critical in any part of the research and its subsequent analysis. So I think that one thing which we, we all need to mention, because that will help us to, if the data is strong, that helps us to, uh, you know, design and to interpret the data and design, define a policy which can be which can come out as a policy brief for our you know policy makers and administrators to implement that same. So I think nutrition as is a very critical element when it comes all researches are very critical with data, but nutrition, because that will help us to change. And I again, like Professor Agnihotri's that run rate, we were slow, we have started increasing our run rate, I think, but run rate will further increase if we generate good data and that data be becomes a policy and then it is implemented. I'll stop here, Anand. On a lighter vein before he leaves, wo run rate badhane ke chakkar mein slip mein catch nahi dena hai. That's why I brought in the question of quality control. Otherwise, wo, I mean, uh, you, you also have to notice ki jab dot ball hai, to helicopter shot marne se wicket jati. So, we, so we'll have to do that discrimination. And, and there are a couple of questions coming in ki software mil sakta hai kya diet ke liye. My simple request is please look up our spoken tutorial on IYCF infant and Young feeding, a child feeding practices. We don't need kisi ka paisa. HRD ne ne humko kafi paisa diya banane ke liye. Hum teen Bharatiya bhasha hume translate kar diya. Usko we are, we are going ahead with it. Just look those up. Usse bhi nahi pet bhara. Pet bhara hum toh bache ka. So come back to us with a specific way. Thank you. Uh, so I, Shishendu, I think thank you again for joining and for also uh, stepping in for Manish at the last minute and um, and you i know you have to leave for another meeting so our, um, our uh, you know again thanks for uh, all of your contributions and for patiently answering all of those questions as well thank you and my apologies for getting log off logged off and logged on again again so my apologies and thank you anand and professor agniotri suganda poini and Bhattati for this opportunity thank you very much thank you, thank thank you, sir, you so for much. this last Bye -bye. step in thank you sir Okay, so uh, Professor Agniyoti, I'm going to come back to you, um, and this sort of takes on um, from something you said uh, in your introductory rem remarks. This whole issue of convergence. Now, again, you know, the nutrition space is a is a perfect sort of storm in a teacup for that because you're talking about agri, you're talking about industry, you're talking about research, you're talking about you know clinicians. You're also talking about tribal department. You're talking about WCD department. You will talk about uh, health. Uh, perhaps, um, you know, uh, you will also talk about industry if you're talking just from the ministry side and many more. So how do we bring all of these stakeholders together? Because at the end of the day, that the, the person we have to have in mind, as you were rightly pointing out, is that kid who is malnourished and uh, is waiting for a solution. And while all of us are trying to figure out across all of these often, uh, you know, walls between all of these sections of, uh, of society. Um, you, you touched a runner. Uh, there's a fabulous article by Santosh Mehrota on why coordination doesn't happen. And it is exactly in the context of malnutrition. I, I, I would recommend that people will read it. The point is, uh, this convergence in the Sarkari system also means a lot of turf uh, overlaps. And this turf overlaps is where the problem comes in. So I move to a slightly different take, which I call the relay race. 
and and that is why i use that lagan uh, simile ki opening batsman apna kaam kare karke nikalta hai so and i'm giving you example there's a hmis data and there's a rch data so the health people will have the whole janampatri of that uh, pregnant woman the unborn child the child after uh, he or she is born within health itself the mother's id in rch and the mother's id in hms don't talk to each other main main bahar ki nahi baat kar raha within so theek hai so they are also like yudhishthir said vayam panchadhikam shatam to 105 nahi hai wo 100 verses 5 hai wahan se come to nutrition the same mother same child wohi id chalni chahiye ab bachcha paida hua uske baad aapne id badli bachcha 6 mahine का हो गया उसके बाद जब आप कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री फीडिंग देते हैं आप आईडी पे देंगे आई थिंक इन डिजिटल इंडिया इनफैक्ट आई हैव टेकन अप दिस मैटर एट अ वेरी हाई लेवल कि भैया इन डिजिटल इंडिया प्लीज मेक दिस थिंग इंटरऑपरेबल सेकंड हेल्थ द लैब दैट हेल्थ रन्स द फर्स्ट लैब ऑफ द रेस हेल्थ शुड से द चाइल्ड हु इज बोर्न मैंने आपको ढंग का वेल नरिश बच्चा आपके हाथ में थमा दिया But if I hand over a 2100 gram kid, if I don't bother about the proportion mukt se pehle, you should at least have severe anemia mukt. Then you will go for anemia mukt. So, 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 so these various mukties, uh, I mean, can be integrated. Uh, integration baad mein hoga. I, I think in mathematics we use the term sigma and integral. Integral complicated. Sigma to kijiye. you collocate all your good performances in one place collocate then coordinate and then convert to so, usme turf wagaire ka lafza nahi aaye so what happens is becomes extremely useful once the health gets sensitized that okay now we are have a job through uh, analysis of the hmis and the rch data is to hand over the, the nutrition sector a reasonably well nourished child then the sanitation people have to say we have to give a reasonably infection free environment so if each one does their job uh, properly even if they do summation and not integration the child will gain a lot the integration can happen the, which is where i am saying it has to happen through technology because i have not understood for uh, my life as to why that qr code which is the link between the physical and the digital the qr code lagana yaar us bachche ko to whatever are the child's uh, entitlements will will be known to everybody why is it that when the child and the mother goes to eat bhatti na vaccination milega na ration milega na thr milega i mean these are some of the things which, which can remove so there are two parts of it one is the silo getting uh, improvised and delivering what they are supposed to do which uh, i think in geeta itself it is said swe swe karmanna bhirata samsiddhim labhate nara na to nar ko sansiddhi ka milte jo apna apna kaam dhang se kar leta hai to each department kar le apna kaam and then this bridging across can be done through the use of uh, technology so i wonder if it is too abstract but uh, to me it is concrete i mean i can see it hap- uh, happening if we do it sure yeah uh so that if i can come back to you uh you know so as someone who's navigating this almost on a mind field as trying to figure out as an innovator how do you develop these solutions who do you target how do you ensure that you have a longer term perspective in mind especially in terms of its implementation and inclusion in in programs how have you tried to navigate this i know maybe these are early days for your startup but i'm sure you have faced some of these challenges and you know how have you been trying to navigate through them yeah like i mentioned uh, currently we are in development stage so our major focus is towards development but we are trying to test the waters here and we are finding some kind of resistance like i mentioned in the challenges that uh, uh, on my, in my presentation slide uh, in terms of lack of awareness that was one major area that uh, i feel that a lot of work needs to be done around that because any it, it's not just the problem that i am facing or my team is facing it is any researcher who would venture into any social area these kind of uh, problems 
uh, would come uh, and that is where we as researchers uh, start questioning as to how viable as a startup can uh, we be you, uh, with uh, just working on uh, social a social cause so that is where we have uh, a dilemma as to choose either choose between the two or do both so that is uh, one of the major uh, challenges that we face and plus uh, since in these social issues uh, probably government uh, would be our major uh, uh, buyer or our market and therefore there are lot of issues that a lot of uh, bureaucratic issues that we don't understand at this stage clearly so not understanding those things clearly and uh, going to the right person identifying the right people to connect with uh, is something we are still figuring out so if that process and that connections like sign has been helping us in connecting with different kinds of people different uh, regulatory from the regulatory perspective from um, uh, facility wise even uh, like uh, this organizing the session uh, we happen to talk to professor uh, agni othri so these kind of connections we make on the way but as a fresh startup we do face challenges as to whom to connect with whom to go to next so those are things that uh, uh, we need to figure out maybe but if this process could be a little more uh, uh, put down on paper it would be helpful for startups to work in this area dr pan uh, uh, for the uh, lack of time i suggest that you summarize the session and we kind of start drawing it to a close that's sure yeah of course yeah we are almost at uh, 526 now yeah so uh, you know this has been great i think we gives us a flavor of course you know malnutrition is a complex enough topic and it's been around as we started of discussing for many many years it's not going to be solved overnight and it's probably one session is not going to give us all the facets of the issue but i think our excellent panel today has spoken around uh, you know this whole issue of malnutrition but also talked about some of the historical facets uh what has been some of the policy solutions where are those gaps where are the kind of problem statements that we need to address at the same time you also heard from funders especially in india around where are the spaces where you can approach and try to get funding if you have a good idea but before that what do you need to do as potential bio innovators make sure that your idea has clarity make sure that you have a good well rounded team that you have finesse in the way you are approaching don't think that just because you've had an idea that it's necessarily not something which other people might not have already thought of and then also use the opportunity of working uh, with platforms like sign there's now a whole network across india that you can access sign is an excellent example um, where people are available there is trained staff uh, who are experienced professionals who will walk you through the process involved who will handhold you through that process and feel free to also reach out to um innovators like soganda would be happy to share our expertise professor atni hotri shershain do i think everyone in this space is very approachable and the reason for that is everyone is passionate about the need to create a set of solutions which actually helps our target audience and our target audience has to be uh, perhaps those kids who remain malnourished who are stunted who are wasted and uh, look at of course addressing their needs but also ensuring that as we move forward our future generations are not necessarily stunted or wasted and as we talk about ourselves as one of the superpowers it's actually um, you know uh, it doesn't um, reflect very well on us that we remain among the leading countries uh, with a significant issue around malnutrition so hopefully this will give you a lot of uh, you know space thoughts uh, ideas for for the kind of solutions that we need and you will work towards them and use all of the enabling environment with sign byrac and uh, and other the whole ecosystem offers so best wishes for that and back to the um, sign team thank you for organizing this session and thank you to all the panelists for all of your excellent contributions yeah. bratati are you there you are on mute bratati you are on mute yes ma'am um, i was just uh, trying to share my screen uh, to inform the audience of the next uh, thing but uh, please go ahead if you want to give your vote of thanks no, so we can yeah so we can just uh, close with a vote of thanks here yeah? like i i guess you are planning to talk about like uh, yes. the yes. so, 
yes. which is going to happen to the participants here. There will be a BIG call, uh, next call, which is likely to open on 1st of August. So keep checking website of BIG as well as sign. We will announce as soon as it is announced by direct. And with this, uh, I, I really appreciate the time, Dr. Ban, you're really excellently moderated, really appreciate your time and like, you know, agreeing to moderate this session just at a one phone call. So thank you very much. And then very, very uh, sincere appreciation for Professor Satish Agnihotri, Dr. Sauganda, and of course, I, I don't see Dr. Shishindu here, but uh, he also chipped in at the very last moment. So thank you all very much. And all of you do keep safe. Um, before we close uh, today's session, I would uh, like to tell you about uh, a guidance session that we are holding in collaboration with IIT Roper this uh, coming Wednesday, the 14th of July. And we would, if you are interested in the BIRAC uh, Ignition Grant Scheme, which uh, its 19th call is being announced on or opens on August 1st, and uh, we would like uh, for you to contact us if you have an idea and you want to apply to this grant. For any questions related to incubation with SIGN or uh, getting in touch with SIGN for other um, queries or concerns or help required in your entrepreneurial journey, we uh, ask you to please write to incubation at signiitv.org. And for any questions related to the big scheme, please uh, email us at uh, sign underscore big at signiitv.org. Please stay tuned for all our sessions uh, in the Par R series. Uh, visit the Sign website for all your information and please subscribe to Sign's YouTube channel and watch recorded sessions that you've missed in the past. With that, um, I thank all our panelists today for uh, giving us their valuable time and providing such an insightful uh, journey through the entire issue of India's uh, malnourishment. And we hope that uh, entrepreneurs and academics who attended this session go home with some um, ideas about how to address this issue. Uh, I thank uh, all of you for your attendance. And with this, I think we'll close this session. We thank you again. Thank you very much.